So this is an Eldest Crusader Shamel. I'm going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. The hitch, jockey wheel and handbrake will be something we we'll take you through in person here on site. Front locker. In the front locker itself, we have the gas regulator and gas shutoff valve on the side. That yellow valve is in the side. You turn that 90 degrees. And it'll allow the gas to be isolated before uh, part of the other side of the regulator. Two gas bottle tie downs. You can carry a maximum of two six kilogram propane gas bottles on board the van. All the heating flue on this side is essentially the gas, uh, the exhaust for the heating system, and then you've got your leg winders on either side at the front. You've got your water pump connection that drops down into the ac roll, um, and the pump will drop down inside of there. Um, and then I'll show you how to fill the system from the inside of the van. Two fridge vents here allow the hot air out the back of the fridge unit. Um, behind one of these, there'll also be a gas flue for the gas operation of the fridge. The motor mover and wheel nuts. The motor mover I'll demonstrate at the end of the video and the wheel nuts will be torqued before the caravan leaves site. The fresh water that goes in the front goes through the taps etc through the sinks and shower will need uh, has to come out somewhere and that's what these two grey pipes are for just below the marker lights on the side of the caravan. Two pieces of grey pipe will pop into the side of there and drop down into your waste master. You've then got your storage locker for underneath the single bed on this side of the van at the rear. And the next locker along is the toilet waste cassette itself. So in here, you've got the toilet waste cassette. To release it, you pull the orange handle up and pull the cassette towards you. The neck here turns out so the waste can be tipped away. The grey cap here is a measure for the blue fluid. And then you've got an orange pressure relief button on the back of the cassette, so when you're tipping the waste away, it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. Before you use the cassette, you need to put one litre of water in here and a cap full of the blue fluid. No flush tank on this particular van, it works off the rest of the water system. At the back of the van where you've got the two white, what I'd say, exhaust pipes, um, is where you'd put the leg winder to wind the legs down. As you can see, we've got one down for the purpose of handover. You'd never lift the caravan with the wind down legs because it could potentially damage the floor of the caravan. Um, they are just there for stabilising the van while the caravan is in use. Go around to the other side now. Got your storage locker for this side of the van again to access the storage um, underneath the rear bunk, underneath the rear single bed. Going further down the side, we've got the battery box. Um, we'll put a battery in there just to demonstrate the motor mover, and then you've got your mains power lead coming to the side of the caravan, and the red power switch you see at the top is for the motor mover itself. You've then got a three-pin socket, so you can have power coming out to an awning, or to your awning. You've got your wind down leg for this side of the van, and you've got your gas barbecue point on the front. Go inside the van. So shut the door over. You've got your main power switch as you come in the door. So the power switch here, oh sorry, power switch here is the main power switch for the caravan. You've got your water pump run, which I'll come back to in a moment. You've got your battery voltage for the system on board the van. Above that, you've got your Audi control panel. Again, I'll come back to this in a moment. And then you've got your light switches um, for various lights around the caravan. One of these will also be for the awning light on the outside. The first thing we're gonna do is, is fill the water system up so we can turn on the hot water. So underneath the seat on the far front side of the caravan, you'll see there is a yellow drain down valve. That yellow drain down valve, when you, when you go to fill the system up, will need to be parallel with the floor. If it was pointing upright towards the bottom of the seat, it would actually drain all the water out of the onboard system. Like I said, as long as that valve is parallel with the floor, you'll be good to fill the system up as long as you've got the ac roll connected on the outside. Once you've connected the ac roll on the outside, you'll need to come over to each tap on board the caravan. And you'll actually notice I've already filled the water system up, but you'll need to open all the taps on the hot side of the water heating. You may potentially see that steam as I've also got it on so it's warming up but you'd open all the taps up on the hot side. That'd be the sink in the uh, kitchen, the sink in the bathroom, and the shower tap itself. Once you open them taps up, all on the hot side, you'll come over to the control panel by the door, and you'll turn on the water pump. Once the water pump's turned on, the water system will start filling, as long as that yellow valve is shut and you've got the ac roll connected. And eventually you'll get water running continuously out of every tap on board the caravan. Once that system's full, you can shut all the taps down and then you can start thinking about warming the water in the water system. 
So the control panel by the door here is what that is for. So as you can see, it's turned on at the moment. You press the store res uh, reset button in the middle and you'd make sure you've got the on flashing on the left hand side. You can turn it on or off while that icon is flashing with it be the on or off just here. We're going to go across to the right now to the next symbol, which is just here which is the internal room temperature, which at the moment you can see is around 30 degrees. And I can assure you it is really that warm in here. To control the temperature, you've got minus or plus to set the temperature for the caravan inside the van. And you can turn it all the way down to zero or five degrees, sorry, so it is essentially turned off. If I come across to the right again, I can turn on the hot water. Uh, hot water. So at the moment it's turned off, I can press on, and that will allow the hot water to start warming up on board the caravan. If I come across to the right again, I've got the option to run the heating and hot water on gas. To be able to do that, so to ignite the caravan system on gas, as I said, sorry, you can turn the gas system on and the gas system will self-ignite. If it ever failed to ignite, you'd get gas fail as words appear on the screen just here. If I come across to the right again, you'll see this two in a box flashing that is essentially the amount of power I have coming to the caravan from the site we are on. So you've got the option of off, one kilowatt of power, controlling your, powering your heating, two kilowatt, uh, sorry, it's one or two kilowatt on this particular van. Um, so if you wanted to run the, the hot water system, uh, the heating or hot water on one or two kilowatt, you'd need to select the correct power source from the control panel by the door. Once you've set all that up, you'll either have your heating on, your hot water on, or both at the same time. And if you want to turn it all off, like I said, you can come back across to have the on flashing and then hit the off button just here. Once you've got the heating and hot water sorted, you probably want to get the beers nice and cold or the wine nice and cold ready for that evening. So you're going to turn the fridge on, on the power button just here. And at the moment, the fridge is trying to ignite on gas. It will actually fail to ignite in a moment just due to the fact the gas is turned off at the moment. The blue light here is a pilot light, so when it has ignited on gas, that will stay continuously lit blue. However, if it failed to ignite, it'd actually flash blue, and you'd have a nine and a spanner symbol just here to let you know it had failed. To control the temperature on gas or mains, you use the button on the right-hand side to control the temperature. To change the power source, you can go over to 240 mains, which if you're on a 240 site, you would just use the 240 um, to save waste in the gas you've got. Or if you're towing down the road, so you want to use a fridge as a cool box, you can put it onto battery mode. The battery is actually the car battery, so it work. So the next part of the caravan we're gonna to go to is the toilet system in the rear of the van. Cooker, grill and hob all work very much like your household um, items. Toilet system has an electric flush up on the wall here. It actually runs off the water system, as you'd probably notice on the outside, didn't let you know where the fuel tank was, so it actually runs off the onboard tanks. You've got a full indicator light here, just to the left-hand left, uh, left -hand side of the flush button, and that'll appear red when the toilet cassette is full. Down below the toilet, you've actually got a grey waste flap. That waste flap there, when you push it across, will allow the toilet waste to go in the cassette underneath the van. Chap, uh, taps and shower etc all work very much like your household items there's no differences at all there um, and that's essentially it for the inside of the van you have got your underbed storage and they very simply lift up and sit in the position they are now the microwave does work very much like your standard household one you've got your start stop etc on the microwave cook times etc there if you have any further questions on the eldest crusader chamel please do give me a call here at the or please do give us a call here at the caravan company and we'll be more than happy to help and i'm going to get out of the way now so the cleaners can finish off getting your van ready thank you very much for watching and we'll speak to you soon if you carry on watching the end of this video you'll actually notice there is a motor mover demonstration thank you bye bye so to engage your motor mover on the wheel you're first going to need your motor mover engagement bar which you can see just here you're going to put the bar onto the side you're going to shut the door over so you don't hit the door with the bar. Then to engage it, you're going to pull the bar over. And lock it in place. Once it's locked in place, you can come to the power switch just by the door. 
you can turn the power supply on with the red key just here. You can press the two green buttons on the controller to turn the controller on. Release the handbrake on the front of the van. And at that point, you're ready to move the van. So you can go forwards on the controller, which is a top button. You can go backwards. You can turn. And you can turn the other way. And then you can do your reverse turns either way also. Once you're done with the mover, you can turn the controller off with the two green buttons again. So the controller goes off. Turn the power off in the side locker. Pull the handbrake back on. and then disengage the mover from the wheel. And that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching.